Welcome back to all of the students of our soon coming King Yeshua, Hamashiach, Yeshua the Christ. We're so excited to be back with you guys. So we're going to um, jump right back into uh, the scriptures. I And I have to let you guys know that uh, I feel so much better. And I want to thank you guys uh, absolutely for praying for your bishop. And, you know, there's a part of me that I am very hard-headed. And my doctors told me, don't go outside bishop. And so, but I said to my doctors, listen, I'm under contract to cover two events. And they say, listen, we don't want you to end up getting pneumonia. So um, do I sound better to you guys? Um, because I have been sick. And I have to let you guys know this. It's great to see all of you. Uh, Hard-headed. That, that's it, uh, Pastor Colleen. I'm just straightforward, you know. And uh, so and I, I do remember, remember specifically what Pastor Colleen said to me some time ago, that the award season is brutal. And, but uh, anyway, I am so excited to be back with you. Uh, great to see you, Pastor Perkins, Pastor Colleen, Pastor Dave, David Yegan, Pastor Ellis Ewing, Pastor Rick, Pastor Jacqueline, all you guys, Pastor Sam, uh, Pastor Jody Burton. <coughs> if I cough here and there, uh, forgive me. But um, I'm telling you, I feel uh, about 75% better. So let's go straight into the scriptures. I invite your attention tonight to the gospel according to St. Matthew. Uh, and I still do need rest, Pastor Alley. Uh, my staff wants me, as you go to St. Matthew, Chapter 24, verse 1. Uh, I do sound a little stuffed, a little bit of stuffed up, uh, Pastor Jackie. And uh, so I've been taking uh, medication, uh, got a Christ centered. Uh, I have Christ centered apostolic doctors, two doctors here in LA, two in New York, and they've been taking care of the bishop. My temperature uh, keeps fluctuating today. Is down to like 96.8. And I want to thank you so very much. And Pastor uh, Ali Sevendetto, uh, I do still need rest. So I want to be with you guys maybe an hour and a half tonight, uh, no more than two hours. Um, but every time I say that, I end up teaching more. So uh, we will not wear you guys out tonight. And I also want to announce that we have not just students here in the United States and students all over the world. Uh, I got an email or my staff got an email today, uh, our staff in New York, uh, stating a, a lot of the student pastors uh, in a town in Tennessee called Adamsville. I've never heard of Adamsville, Tennessee. And this email said, in essence, Bishop, can you and your staffs, both out of Los Angeles and in New York, do a series on the assassination of the late Sheriff Buford uh, Pusser? Do you guys remember the movie Walking Tall? Back during the 70s, one of my favorite actors, uh, what's his name? Joe, what's his name? Joe Baker, who played uh, Sheriff Buford Pusser. Joe Dom, just what's his name? Joe Dom Baker, I think, I think that's his name. So, uh, Pastor Ellis Ewing, thank you, Pastor Ellis. So, um, my staff, Joe Dom Baker, love that brother, man. Um, met him once some years ago and an event here in Los Angeles. Um, and so they want me to do a series on him. And I'm thinking why, because they said that recently that 
the uh, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, thank you, Pastor Rick, had ordered the body of his wife to be uh, exhumed from the grave. And there's a reason for that. And so it's a, it's a tremendous film, Pastor Rick. And that brother, man, uh, the Dixie mob took him out. But I also believe there were forces in our government as well. So I'm going to do uh, a one-time series on the assassination of Sheriff uh, Buford um, Pewser. We need more men like that today, okay? Uh, and so great to see all of you guys. Uh, so let's get straight into uh, the word of the Lord. It's, it's a, listen, we are living in the greatest time of exposure now, okay? Uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew uh, chapter 24, verse 1. Again, the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 1. Please forgive me for the lateness. And then dropping down to verse number 22. Great to see you, uh, Pastor Colleen, Pastor Deborah, Deborah Watts. Uh, great to see you, great woman of God. Pastor uh, True Witness Ministries, Pastor Charity, great to see you. Pastor Tierra, my, my daughter in North Carolina, great to see you. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1, dropping down to verse 22. And then dropping down to verse 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1, dropping down to verse 22, and dropping down to verse 29. I also need you to matriculate over to the next gospel, the gospel according to St. Mark, which in actuality is actually the first gospel. It's not Matthew. Apostolically, technically, it's Mark. So we'll, we'll go to Mark chapter 13, verse 20. Oh, Lord, I feel an anointing here. Listen, Mark chapter 13, verse 20. The key verses that I want you to concentrate on tonight, from whence we shall receive tonight's lecture theme, is back in the book of the genetics of God called the Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16 then dropping down to verse 19. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, dropping down to verse 19. Let's lay apostolic foundation tonight out of the gospel according to St. Matthew. Three things I need you to have. Number one, I need you to have the greatest weapon in history, the gospel that Christ taught, the King James interpretation. But this is the greatest weapon in history. If you don't have the physical King James Version, it is imperative that you have the electronic version. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Uh, those of you who don't do not have a physical King James Version, please uh, click on the link right beside Pastor Colleen's name and right beside Pastor Emma Noe's name www.kingjamesbibleonline, King James Bible Online. Number two, make sure you, you had two to three pins. And number three, make sure you have a large notebook. Thank you so much, Pastor Colleen. Matthew chapter 24, verse number one. Get those off of Telegram, BitChute, Gab. Get them off of Facebook, Instagram, X, Twitter, and TikTok. Because if you thought volume one was mind-blowing, you've seen nothing yet. Great to see you, Pastor Sam, my son. Thank you, sir. All right, Matthew chapter 24, verse number one. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And Yeshua, or Yahashua, went out and departed from the temple, the body, 
and his disciples, his disciplines came to him for to show him the buildings of the body or the temple. Dropping down to verse 22. And except those days shall should be shortened. I really need you to concentrate on this term shortened. And except those days should be shortened. Not diminish, shortened. Not shrunk or in the process of shrinking, but shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, time would slow down for the apostolics, but it would speed up for the non-apostolics. Great to see you, Pastor uh, Sippy Mata, my daughter in Christ. Great to see you, and Pastor Anna, great to see you. Now, go over to Mark 13 and 20. Man, uh, there's an anointing here tonight. Mark Chapter 13, verse 20. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And except that the Lord or Yahweh had shortened, not diminished those days, shortened, not to shrink those days, shorten those days, no flesh should be saved but for the elect's sake whom he have chosen, he have shortened the days. For the righteous, the apostolics, time is an illusion. For the unrighteous, time is their reality. Now the key verses uh, that I want you all to concentrate on tonight, goes back to the book of the beginnings called the Genesis, the genetics of God. I cannot get out of Genesis, Pastor Sam and Pastor Jody. Look at this, Genesis chapter one, verse 16. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day not what the deep state calls the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, not the entity moon that is called by the deep state. He made the stars also. This is the galaxy of the apostolic stars. God made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. This is not, okay, the same as the light in verse 3. Because in Genesis 1 and 3, is not what the deep state calls the sun. The light in Genesis 1 and 3 is God himself. And you're right, Pastor Rick. We got to stop calling stars planets. So in verse 16, the 19 is not the same light as in verse 3. Thank you, Pastor Sam. In Genesis 1 and 3, God did not create the light. I got your attention now. It did not say that God created the light. Why would God need to create himself? He is the light. And in Christ, there is no darkness at all. That's verse three. But in verse 16 to 18 is both the greater light to rule the day 
and the lesser light to rule the night. Verse 19. I'm the evening, and the morning were the fourth day. Encounters of the fourth kind. Heavenly Father, send forth thy truth, for thy word is the truth. And Yeshua's holy name. Let's lay apostolic foundation as you go back to Matthew 24, verse 1. Of module 2, ladies and gentlemen, volume 2. The Immaculate Patterns of simulated deception. The immaculate patterns of simulated deception. 2024 will be an apostolic year where banks will fall. The U.S. dollar will be replaced by the European dollar called the euros and including a dollars, the creation of, of the dollar by the BRICS organization. In 2024, more actors will die. More actresses will die. Politicians will die. In 2024, two of the Supreme Court judges will be removed because of corruption. And 2024, there shall be earthquakes in divers or different places. For these are the beginning of sorrows. But the end is not yet. In 2024, you're going to see so-called preachers bow at the feet of both the black and the gray pope of Rome, where same-sex marriage would be accepted in the body of Christ. You're going to have same-sex restrooms in local ministries. And you're going to have the creation of an LGBTQ Bible. I want you to hear me. For these, ladies and gentlemen, are the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. The days on the earth are getting longer each year for the unrighteous, because the lesser light moves 1.5 inches further away from the earth. 1.4 billion years ago, when the earth was still in its embryonic stage. Our universe alone, I'm not even talking about the remaining balance of the 17 trillion universes, our universe alone, including this, what we call a post-creation Earth, has only moved six inches for the past 6,000 years. Allow me to say this again. Our universe alone and this terra firma called the earth has only moved six inches for the past 6,000 years. 
the totality since Genesis 1 and 3 to Genesis 3 and 6, 13.7 billion years plus 6,000 years since our recreation from Genesis 3 and 6 to now, 13 billion, 700 million, 6,000 years or inches that our universe has moved. In other words, we as a creation are still in the sixth trimester. We are still experiencing what you call morning sickness, the Gaza Strip, Ukraine, the Middle East, China. 13 billion, think about that, 700 million, 6,000 inches we've only moved. So all of the advancement, all of the technological age and the advancement through medicine in the arts, in the sciences, we have only moved no more than 13 billion, 700 million, 6,000 inches, which means as a creation, we haven't even been born yet because we're still in the sixth trimester. The immaculate patterns, ladies and gentlemen, of simulated deception. 18 hours long over a billion years ago, between Earth and the lesser light, which the deep state calls the moon. As the lesser light students pulls on the Earth, it creates a tidal bulge, B-U-L-G-E. You see, only red pillars will understand this, Pastor Tierra. The tidal bulge acts like a brake, slowing the Earth's rotation by a billion years. How is it that our Earth can rotate by why aren't we 8.1 billion people rotating? You and I are rotating but we're held down by a fallen state called gravity. Pre-fall Adam, the Adam of Genesis 2, the stars, including the Earth, simply did not rotate because Adam was the Earth. Pray for Adam, he had no height, no weight, no depth, no culture. Because as God is, so was Adam. Adam was omnipresent, for God breathed that into him. Adam become, became omniscient, because God breathed that into him. And Adam became omnipotent, all power, because God breathed that into him. But we lost that because of our fallen state. Oh, Pastor Pamela Jackson, think about this. For the past 6,000 years, we only moved six inches. We are still in the sixth trimester as the body of God's creation. 
Let's continue to lay foundation for the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Adam did not need a compass because Adam was the compass. Christ came through his shed blood and through his shed blood, we have access to what we were prior to Adam's fall. The Tartarian empires harness energy through the construction and the engineering of buildings that were in alignment to God's creation and God's light. 75 to 80% of major buildings throughout the earth are buried upon Tartarian technology and empire. The Tartarian empire taught free energy. That free energy is a, now a massive threat to the oil industry. Who invented the electric car? It was not Tesla or Ford or GM or Chrysler. The Tartarians created the concept of what we call the electric car. And also there is technology now that a car or a truck can ride on water. The immaculate patterns of simulated deception. But the 13 families from the Rothschilds down to the Lee family in Hong Kong, capital L-I, destroyed all of the Tartarian or agriculture by building on top of it. See, they put, thank you, Pastor Sippy. The Tartarian knowledge to harness wind and water as energy came from God. Let's continue the laid foundation. The philosophy of order students is the history of consciousness and politics the compartmentalization of a subject by distinguishing different differences as opposed to other differences, thus resulting, resulting in the order to be connected to God's energy. We're not supposed to be paying for water. Why are we paying for water? Why are we paying for electricity that God gave us? Because of these demons called the rotten childs. Let's continue to lay foundation. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Normally, I don't go straight into the body of the text or the key verse. Uh, because I am led of the Lord tonight to go straight to Matthew chapter 24, verse 1, and dropping down to verses 22 and 29. As we are methodically breaking down foundationally the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And Yahushua, or Yeshua, went out and departed from the temple. Not just the brick and mortar temple, this temple. And his disciplines came to him, that's italicized, for to show him the buildings. Not just architect on the earth, but architecture apostolically. The term discipline 
When you look at the term disciple, it means to discipline. You cannot have a ministry unless you learn the disciplines of the Christ. Christ calls 12 different disciplines and the number 12 is a number of apostolic foundation. The 12 tribes of the 12 apostles unrevealed and the 12 apostles of the 12 tribes revealed. The scriptures declare that we're all setting in heavenly places in Christ but that does not mean that all of us are occupying the same place in the heavenlies. Oh, thank you, Pastor Sam. In other words, all of us have the Holy Spirit. I don't call Yeshua the Holy Ghost. That term ghost was put into the text by the Vatican order going back to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey. Christ is not a poltergeist. The Germanic term for ghost is geist. So Christ is not a ghost. Christ is not a geist. Neither is Christ poltergeist. Christ is the Holy Spirit. Examine verse 22. I saw something here for the per first time in 45 years of global ministry. In Matthew 24, verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, the apostolic body of saints, those days shall be shortened. Christ did not say those days shall shrink. Neither did Christ say those days shall be diminished. Well, what's the difference between shrinking and shortening? Shrinking means the size of the matrix called time. Shorten or shortening means the length of the matrix of time. Shrink means limited only to the reduction of the size of time. To diminish means the downward spiral of the descending of time. Christ did not use the words shrink, shrinking, neither did Christ use the terms diminish or diminishing. But in verse 22, he uses the term to shorten. In other words, to the righteous, you and I, It seems like that our dispensation is almost over, which it is. But to the unrighteous, it is longer. Why is that? The sons of Exachar, one of the tribes of Israel, the sons of Exachar knew and they understood the time. Do you remember what Acts 2 and 1 says? When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Pentecost is a time. Apostolic is timelessness. Here's an example. When you say apostolicity, the apostolic, the oneness of God in the person of 
Yeshua the Christ has no time. Genesis chapter one, verse one is monotheism. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. It's saturated throughout scripture, beginning in Genesis chapter one, verse one. Apostolic in Acts two and one was in the womb of Pentecost. Follow me. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, you see, uh, pastors, you're not just pastoring a people, you're pastoring a time. What time is it? How do I pastor time? So Pentecost was impregnated with the apostolic. Allow me to ask you a question. Is the term son, S-U-N, in Genesis chapter one? No. Is the term moon in Genesis chapter one? No. Is the term men, M-E-N, in Genesis chapter one? No. Is the term woman or women in Genesis one? No. Because the term son in moon, a Roman Empire inventions. Wait a minute, the term sun, S-U-N, does not show up until Genesis 15 and 12. This is what the 19th Council did in 325 AD. The term sun, see, you and I have been taught a lie that the fourth day of recreation, God created the term S-U-N. He did not. This is radical. God did not create the Roman god goddess called Sol, S-O-L, Invictus. Neither did God create the entity called moon or the goddess Allah and Lunar. But God created the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, not sun and moon. You see, this is where Satan brings addiction. He wants to add something that doesn't need to be added to scripture. So the son, the term son, is not made mention in Genesis 1. Doesn't show up until Genesis 15 and 12. The term moon is not in Genesis 1. It doesn't show up until Genesis 37, verse 9. The term men, God blew my mind this one. He said, Bishop, there's a great distinction between the terms man versus men. I'll explain it in the next five to 10 minutes. The term men, M-E-N, is not in Genesis 1 and doesn't show up in until Genesis 4.26, including Genesis 6 and 1. The term woman is not in Genesis 1. It doesn't show up until Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. In the term women is not in Genesis 1. 
Women doesn't show up until Genesis 14, 16. Notice the term women. The origin of that term women comes from a Latin Roman term with or to with. W-I-F, it means ineptitude. No, God did not design you, a woman of God, to, to be that. I'm dealing with the origins of why we say the words that we say and don't know the origin or the root cause of how that word came into being. Women with men, it means an extreme stone drunk entity under Roman law. With men, lacking foresight, failing to capitalize due to one's ineptitude. God did not create the woman of God with that mentality. So the term women came out of Rome. Woman came from God through Adam. See, there's a difference between woman and women. Lord have mercy. I said, Lord, are they ready for this? God says, yes. The term man is in Genesis 126 and 127. The term male is in Genesis 126 and 127. The term woman doesn't show up until Genesis 2.22. And Eve, the term Eve, does not show up until after the woman's fall in Genesis 3 and 20. So in Genesis 126 and 27, you have man, male, Adam. Then you have female, woman, Eve. God never ordained for a man to marry another man. God never ordained a woman to, ma to marry another woman. That is disorder, confusion, it's filth, it's an abomination. Let's get back to the term son, S-U-N. Where did the term son, S-U-N, come from? God never created that entity called son. The greater light, yes, to rule the day. And the lesser light, yes, to rule the night. And he made not planets, but stars also. That's on day four. The Roman Empire invented the term S-U-N. Publius Ovidius, O-V-I-D-I-U-S, one of the legal founding fathers of the 12 laws of the Roman Empire. Publius Ovidius or Ovid had said that the term human race means the human trance. Publius Ovid, along with scientists and philosophers in Rome, Sextus Paetus, P A E T U S, Lucius. Aquilius, A-C-I-L-I-U-S, sapiens, this is where you get the term homo sapien, S-A-P-I-E-N-S, 
who not only designed the 12 tables of Roman law that actually goes back to 449 BC, but also another scholar by the name of Gaius Plinius or Plinius Secunda, C S E C U N D U S, or better known as Pliny the Elder. The scholar during the time of the Roman Empire, Pliny, P L I N Y, the Elder, was a naturalist who believed in the operation of combining the bodies of children and adults to the limbs of animals. Transhumanism, geo and social engineering. Pliny, Pliny the Elder wrote a book and was published in 79 AD called Naturalist Historia. Can the bishop teach? Naturalist Historia. N A T U R A L L I S Historia H I H I S T O R I A Naturalist Historia written by Gaius or Pliny the Elder taught the Roman medical surgery of high breeding and body modification. Connecting human, <coughs> what they call human, which means monster, bodies to the legs of animals. In Naturalist Historia, pharmacology is called water witching. I have to be careful. Naturalist Historia taught that the term Soul, S O L Invictus, represents the forerunner of the Encyclopedia. Wait a minute. Encyclopedia or Encyclop, the third eye, C Y C L O P Pedia. The terms Sun or soul, S O L, the sun god, the invincible sun, Christ has nothing to do with this. Other scientists, such as Galen and Ptolemy, created the term sun, and then the Roman Empire, through Constantine, took out the phrases greater light and put in in its place sun, S-U-N, and took out the terms lesser light throughout the scriptures and put and replaced it with the term moon, lunar, the goddess of seduction, Allah, a transsexual moon god. The symbols of semicolon, so invectus, commas, the term so invectus means happy so invectus. Do you guys remember the flag of Virginia? that Alexander the Great had created, that 16-pointed sundial on a, the Macedonian flag. Do you guys remember the cover of the book that you guys can look up right now on Amazon Books called Eaters of Children? You guys remember that? Eaters of Children, the Pedagogy Exposed. P-E-D-O-C-R-A-C-Y. Eaters, oh, you remember that, guys, and Pastor Sam. Eaters of children, the pedagogy exposed, it shows a demonic entity with so invectus behind its head. 
and many Vatican paintings going back centuries has the Catholic saints with so invectus or a glow around there. That's not the anointing. That's in worshiping the sun god so invectus in the sun goddess lunar or the moon. Thank you, Pastor Colin. You see, this is the show me state. You got to show people. That cover of the book, Eaters of Children, notice behind the head of this demon is the sundial of the flag of Macedonia. And that same symbol behind that demon with a child in its mouth, eaters of children on Amazon books, is also on the seal of the CIA. When you go to Wikipedia and type in CIA logo, the seal of the soul of Invectus, the sun god who eats children is on the shield of the Central Intelligence Agency. Also, the Iranian deity demon, Mithra, M-I-T-H-M-I-T-H-R-A, also called Mer, M-E-H-R, or Mer. Oh, okay, so the wise men from the East bought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, taking myrrh, not just from plants, but those plants that were designed in the worship of Mithra, they had the nerve to put that in the face of God at the manger. The Sassanian Empire, it gets deeper. S-A-S-A-N-I-A-N Empire, the Second Persian Empire, the Neo-Persian Empire, so invictus has a generational of demonic children called psychopomps, P-O-M-P-S, creatures, demons, fallen angels, deities, whose assignment is to escort newly deceased souls to hell, but yet we're calling the greater light the sun. The immaculate patterns of simulated deception. The flag of Macedonia or Greece, the Virginia sun, and that part, excuse me, uh, women of God. See, this is what the deep state medical world has done. And I've said this so many times, I will continue to say it. 90 to 95% of the names of body parts did not come from God. They came from Roman, Greek, Assyrian, Syrian, Persian mythology and demonologies thousands of years ago. Remember Peter Nygaard's play? Wait a minute, who's Peter Nygaard? The Canadian Jeffrey Epstein. If you can, uh, uh, students, beginning with Pastor uh, Colleen, type in on google.com. Peter Nygaard's N-Y-G-A-R-D apostrophe S. Peter Nygaard's Lolita Express inside the disgrace fashion mogul's private jet. You'll find that on dailymail.co slash UK. An opt-ed by Ben Ashford for dailymail.com, published on the 18th of December, 2020. In the middle of that page on dailymail.co slash, thank you, Pastor Colleen, UK, 
it will show a stripper's pole, but at the floor of the stripper's pole on Peter Nygaard's jet is the 16 point symbol of the flag of Virginia, the term that was given to females by the deep state for a certain body part. It's the name of a demon. No, you're not demons, uh, woman of God. But when I'm saying I'm exposing the origins, wait a minute now, Peter Nygaard's jet at the floor of the stripper's pole on that link right beside Pastor Colleen's name is the same 16 point flag of Regina that's also on the seal of the Central Intelligence Agency that's also on the cover of the book, Eaters of Children, the Pedagoxy Exposed. And it's also the symbol in the official logo of the National Pan-Hellenic Council. Listen, Black Code, can I teach? It's not, it's, there's no coincidence, Pastor Colling. On the website, nphchq.com, this is the National Pan-Hellenic Council's website through the creation of nine black Greek letter fraternity and sorority secret societies. Thank you, Pastor Colin. You see, this is to show me, see, let me get a drink of water here. Can, can I take my time tonight? I said, can the apostle take his time? So why would black folk not all black folk, but those a part of the black skulls and bones, part of the pan-Hellenic, and the term pan means a two-horned demon. That's for your pan-African centricity scholars, your pan-Africanists. Why would the National Pan-Hellenic Council, the Boulay Sicker Society, have that same symbol that's on Peter Nygaard's plane, that's on the front of the CIA logo, that's on the front of the pedophile book, Exposing Pedophilia, Eaters of Children. Why would black folk have that? Because those, not all black people, those members of the Boulay Sicker Society know about the system of pedophilia. Wait a minute now. The term pan means a a two-horn demon. Let's continue to lay foundation of the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. So the Roman god Sol, S-O-L, Invictus, meaning the unconquered sun, and the Roman goddess named Libertas, L-I-B-E-R-T-A-S. If you get an opportunity, students, I want you right now to type in Roman goddess Libertas on Google Images. Roman goddess Libertas, L-I-B-E-R-T-A-S. It gets deeper. There's a difference between freedom and liberty. You see, liberty means you do have certain rights, but yet you're kept on a political leash. That's liberty, but that's not freedom. Freedom means you are sovereign. 
Do you know where the IRS was first registered as an entity? The IRS was first registered as an entity out of Puerto Rico. Before Puerto Rico became a commonwealth of the United States. The term liberty means illumination, illuminating the world, illuminati, illuminato, illumination. The term bulletarian, B-O-U-L-U-T-E-R-I-O-N, bulletarian, the council that submits to its masters. Black folk have never created and don't own an organization. Oh, they created the, no, black people did not create the NAACP, stop. Henry Moskowitz and the Spingarn brothers out of Eastern Europe Joe and Isaac Spingarn came to the United States in the early part of the 1900s and created the NAACP with black faces, but the powers behind it are not black. The NAACP, Core SNCC Urban League, even the Nation of Islam, was created by a black New Zealander. Correction, a white New Zealander. <laughs> Let me, wait a minute. No, oh my God. I am going to get some emails and some calls this week. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. With these men and women called Master Farad, Farad, Fraud Muhammad, never went to Mecca. He was born a white, a white New as, as a white New Zealander whose parents came out of British India. When I say British India, it's when the Indian uh, Empire was colonized by Great Britain. So the Nation of Islam was created not by a black man, by a white New Zealander who went to prison for murder. Am I right in saying that, Pastor Sam, okay? Not one so-called black organization was ever created by us. It was designed for us, but it's not controlled by us. You're still slaves on the plantation. This is the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. The Statute of Liberty. Can I take my time? The Statue of Liberty has a crown of seven spikes, seven other spirits controlling the seven continents in the seven seas of the world. Give me liberty or give me illumination and give me death. There was a woman by the name of Emma Lazarus. I'm going to take my time here. You see, I agitate a lot of demons. So I'm going to take my time. Can I take my time? A lot of people don't know this, what the bishop is about ready to reveal. You know this. As we're just slowly talking about the immaculate patterns of simulated deception here on Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Los Angeles. Stay there in Matthew 24, verse 1 in Genesis 1.16. This woman, Emma Lazarus, wrote the new Colossus. Give me your tie, you're poor. 
your hungry yearning. Thank you, Pastor Cynthia. Type in on Google.com, the truth is the light. Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants in South America. It's on the Truth is the Light website. The Truth is the Light, Moses Lazarus, the father of Emma Lazarus, a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants or plantations in South America. The father of Emma Lazarus owned slaves first out of Portugal, then out of Eastern and Central Europe going back to the late to early 1800s. A brutal slave owner whose daughter became the face of the Statue of Liberty. I want you to hear me tonight. If I was president, I would order the Statue of Liberty to be taken down. And if I was president, I would order the original Statue of Liberty that the French gave to us of a black woman, not because she's black, but a black woman holding the word of God in one hand and a broken ball and chain in the next. If you can pass a calling, just type in, the truth is the light, Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner, who ran sugar plants in South America. Or just type in Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner. Now, what does Moses Lazarus have anything to do with the immaculate patterns of simulated deception? Moses Lazarus had married his own cousin who came out of the Nathan family. I'm not talking about Jews. I'm not talking about you. Yeah, I am talking about one bloodline, the Rothschilds. The truth is the light. Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants or plantations in South America. If you find that uh, link, Pastor Colleen, please put it up because uh, uh, this is heavy. Moses Lazarus, just like his friend, a slave owner by the name of August Schoenberg. Do you remember August Belmont Schoenberg, who was the head of the New York State Democratic Party? One of the founding fathers of Wall Street, who never whipped his slaves. He would burn slaves from babies on up, burn them at the stake, that's why the horse race that he created is called the Belmont Stakes. His friend, Moses Lazarus, whose daughter is the face of the Statue of Liberty. Don't call me an empty set. I'm going by facts. The truth is the light. Now allow me to guide you, okay, to that link. Moses Lazarus 
was a brutal slave owner. And it's on Triple W or HTTPS dot the truth is the light dot home dot blog. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you can find that, Pastor Colleen, it's on the truth is the light dot home dot blog. Moses Lazarus a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants or plantations in South America, went to New York City. His daughter, Emma Lazarus, who eventually became the face of the Statue of Liberty, Emma Lazarus was a Marxist, a communist, who is now the face of the Statue of Liberty. But if I was president, I would order through executive order the dismantling of this entity named Emma Lazarus. Not just a Marxist, a communist, a socialist, but also she was a major proponent of black eugenics. I want you guys right now, please, I, I, I want to stay on this. If you guys can, the truth is the light dot home dot blog. Or just type in on google.com Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants. Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants on the truth is the light dot home dot blog. Her father was a brutal slave owner along with his business partner, a man by the name of Bradish Johnson, B-R-A-D-I-S-H. But yet, this woman, who was supported by Tammany Hall, in now what is Tam? I'll get to Tammany Hall. Stay there. <laughs> in Matthew twenty-four, verse one. If you find that, uh, students, put up the link beginning with Pastor Colleen. Why would the United States choose a known Marxist, a communist? a racist to be face of the Statue of Liberty. Again, you guys go to google.com. It's there. It's post dated October 10th, 2020. Moses Lazarus, a brutal slave owner who ran sugar plants, is on the truth is the light dot home dot blog. We'll put it up. Uh, praise God after tonight's lecture. The truth is the light. Moses Lazarus, who was a brutal slave owner, who was forced out of South America because of the Portuguese Inquisition. His daughter was a major proponent of black eugenics. Thank you, Pastor Simon. Pastor Simon found it. And, and, and type that in, Pastor Colleen, what Pastor Simon just found right there. You see, this is the show me state. Emma Lazarus was financially subsidized by Tammany Hall. Now, what is Tammany Hall? It is the left-wing democratic machine, which still exists to this day, not under the term Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall was founded May 12, 1789, and supposedly dissolved in 1967. Tammany Hall was named after 
a man by the name of Tamanid, T-A-M-A-N-E-N-D, who lived during the 16th and 1700s. When you go to Wikipedia and type in Tamanid, T-A-M-A-N-E-N-D, and on the right side of that Wikipedia link, thank you so much, Pastor Colleen, under Tamanid, it shows a picture of the 42nd New York Infantry Movement, Gettysburg Battle for Women and now. So Tammany Hall, to this day, is was not dissolved, but Tammany Hall is New York City's democratic liberal machine, subsidized by George Soros. Named after the Indian chieftain, Tammany, whose father and family sold New York City for $24. Let me say this again. Tammany Hall is named after a chieftain by the name of Tamanid of the Lenny Lape people in L-E-N-N-I L-E-N-A-P-E or the Turtle Clan Indians who own what we what is called today New York State which was New Amsterdam, but sold it. Sold it to the Dutch in 1626 for $24. And it was chartered, New Amsterdam was chartered in 1653. And New Amsterdam came under British rule in 1664, which is now called New York City. No one's teaching this, Pastor Brittany. So the Portuguese Kanzarians arrived in New Amsterdam, 23 families, one of them being the Lazarus family who had to flee Recife, Brazil, R-E-C-I-F-E, Brazil, because of the Spanish Inquisition, the, the Portuguese Inquisition forced out slave owners, not just, out of, not just out of Eastern, Central, and Western Europe, but also out of the southern portion of South America, Kanzarians. The Lazarus family was one of the first families, along with the Rothschilds, to create the financial slave system called Georgism, G-E-O-R-G-I-S-M, named after a Rothschild agent by the name of Henry George that created the economic rent system of paying rent, but never owning property. It gets deeper. Georgeism, or through the Lazarus family, were forced slaves to pay rent on the land that they were slaves. If they did not pay rent, the bodies were ripped into. This is where you get the paradigm of renting or splitting a body in two. It gets deep of the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Emma Lazarus, this dog, this dog likeness. I'm sorry, forgive me, Lord. I gotta be careful. I don't want us to get a strike or be taken down. Emma Lazarus. Give me a tie, you're poor, you're hungry. You're, she was a communist, a Marxist, and a socialist who was a proponent of black eugenics. And it was Emma Lazarus who became the face 
of the Statue of Liberty that's built on top of the foundation of Tartarian structure and Tartarian engineering. Those seven spikes around her crown, remember the flag of Virginia, 16 dials on the cover of the book, Eaters of Children, on the cover of the seal of the CI's logo, on the, at the bottom of the stripper's pole on Peter Nygaard's plane. And now the symbol of the Panhellenic Greek Council of the Black Skulls and Bones. I have to continue to use wisdom. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Emma Lazarus, a member of Tammany Hall, had a relationship with the 16-year-old girl in 1885 named Emma Goldman. Emma Goldman, a lesbian who slept with an older woman by the name of Emma Lazarus, the face of the Statue of Liberty in 1885, went down in the middle of Harlem the year before in 1884, three years before Emma Lazarus' death, tearing up copies of, of the Constitution. What does that look like and sound like? This witch, Nancy Pelosi. Emma Goldman later was excommunicated and deported out of the United States. Good. You cannot open up the political chest cavity of the United States and to put an artificial heart called communism, socialism, and Marxism because the body of our nation will reject it. Is your mind blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight, the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. So yes, Emma Goldman, the face of the Statue of Liberty, a known racist who support, who supported black eugenics, black depopulation, who was a Marxist and Leninist, a socialist became the face of American liberty. But if I was president, that thing would topple. The immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Now the text, after one hour, 23 minutes and 50 seconds, Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 1, dropping down quickly to verse 22. For the apostolics, this illusion called time is being shortened. For the unrighteous, time is slowing down. The ancient Boulay logo, going back to the time of Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates is a half man, half male, half lion, half woman with breast, with this left paw on a skull. That's the original Boulay logo going back 2,000 years. The present day Boulay logo, half lion, half man, half male, half woman with breast, has its right paw on a urn, you are in that they keep the ashes of dead people. So the first Boulay Griffin logo has his left paw on a skull. The present day Boulay logo has his right paw on an urn that keeps the crushed skulls of the thinking of a people who don't know who they are. 
in Rome, so invictus is the god called the solar system. The term solar system is nowhere to be found in scripture. Block these demons that they're cussing, block them. The term solar system is not in Genesis 1. The term solar system means the anatomy of the sun god soul invictus. Anything that God creates, Satan tries to pervert. Here comes the moon now. If you can, keep a marker there in uh, Matthew 24, verses 1, 22, and down with you, verse 29. Go back to Genesis chapter 1, verses 16 to 19. Let's go to day 4. Encounters of the fourth kind. There was a fourth one in the fire like unto the Son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. I'm sorry, Abednego. And then the fourth one was like the Son of God. Four Gospels. Four Gospels. Christ waited a fourth day to resurrect Lazarus. Encounters of the fourth kind. So in day four is the greater light, not called sun. You see, what the deep state is attempting to do is to take God's creation and pervert it by adding names of Roman and Greek and Persian deities. So in day four, in Genesis 1.16, and God made two great lights. He didn't say he created them. Anything that's made Post Genesis 1 and 3, it means recreation. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. You see, this is the show me state. So anytime it says God said, God made, God called, said, made, call. Creation in Genesis 1 verses 3 to 31 is not the original creation it's a recreation of what already was in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Now, here comes the deep state term called the moon. In Genesis 1 and 16, the greater light must be called the greater light, not called so invictus the sun and the lesser light to rule the night is not moon that's been added by demons through the roman empire deep state beginning with constantine at the 325 ad conference in nicene turkey here comes the moon The term moon, if you can do me a favor, go to Wikipedia and type in men, M-E-N, then in parentheses, deity. M-E-N, then the term deity. Remember, at the onset of tonight's lecture, the term men is not in Genesis 1. The term moon, according to Roman law, it signifies to mean or meant. Moon is the masculine form of men. It is the masculine form of men in the term men is also the name of the Phrygian god 
called mean or saline. Let me go through this again. <laughs> you see, as pastor, okay, Tierra Breeze, this is for Red Pill students. The term men is nowhere to be found in Genesis 1. Man, yes, but not men. Man means pre-hybrid, not touched. That's man. Men means a hybrid. So the term men is a name of a deity in Roman and Greek and Persian mythology of the Phrygian, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N. The Phrygian moon god called men. I want you to hear me tonight. Brothers, you're man of God. So man means origination. Men means post-fall. But the term men, oh, Lord have mercy. Pray for me, Pastor Lesser. This is deep. When you talk about the term man, it's in Genesis 126 and 127. But the term men, M-E-N, does not show up until Genesis 4.26 and eventually in Genesis 6 and 1. After the fallen angels touched the daughters of men, any male children fell from manhood to menhood. Now, somebody's going to say, oh, what makes this? You see, this class is not for you. No one's teaching this, Pastor Charity. On that Wikipedia site under men, deity. It comes from the Greek acronym of men's with the V, Sonny. M, M, apostrophe, N, V. Men means moon or month of the moon. So I had to repent because God said, Bishop, I need you to start when you talk about the brothers and encourage them, don't call them men. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord. God says, this is the reason why. You are a man of God, not a hybrid called men a Greek and Roman god, a deity called mean men. Or I meant this. Well, you just curse yourself because that term meant or means is the name of the Phrygian, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N, moon god called men. And the term men is not in Genesis 1. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Oh, is this mind blowing? Let me get a drink of water. Listen, Lord have mercy. Let me wipe some of the anointing off. <laughs> so stay there now. Stay there in Genesis 1, 16 to 19. The immediate, the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Wait a minute now. The moon god called men or mean or saline, like saline solution, which hazel. Allah, the moon god, lunar, is the female aspect of moon. God did not create the moon. He created the lesser light. See, this is apostolic language. God created the greater light to rule the day. And he created and made the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars, not planets. See, you call them planets, but the stars. See, you need, listen, uh, 
That's why the theological world needs to be retaught. Because the term sun is not in Genesis 1. The term moon is not in Genesis 1. It gets deeper. Concentrate. So the term moon also represents the Luna calendar. Luna is the Roman goddess of the moon, the personification and divine essence of the moon. God has nothing to do with that. Thank you, Pastor Rick. Luna, so a 12-month calendar, January to December, back to January, is a 12-month calendar of the names of deity moons or demons. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Stay right there in Genesis 1, 16 to 19, the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Luna, the Roman goddess of the moon, is the personification and divine demonic essence of the moon. It's the female counterpart of the male sun god, so Invectus. The calendar, first six months of so Invectus, the last six months, Luna, we're living inside of a simulation. So then the term men, now if you get a chance, type in where did the word moon originate from? Where did the term moon originate from? Or where did the word moon originate from? The term saline, S-E-L-E-N-E, -E -E, was also called mean, M-E-N-E. -E. The Greek word mean, M-E-N-E, -E, signifies the moon in the lunar calendar month, the masculine form of mean or men. Men, the term men is the name of the Phrygian moon god men. So that's why the term men is not in Genesis 1. Man is, but not men, the hybrid. Now be honest, have you ever heard anyone teach this? <laughs> Raise your hands. Do you understand? See, my assignment, Pastor, Deborah Watts, is to take the body of Christ back to its origination. Why do we use the words that we use, the terms, the phrases that carries curses? And you wonder why people, if they've got cancer and leukemia and high blood pressure, low blood pressure, Sickle cell anemia. Why do people, and I got to tell you this as well. I asked the Holy Spirit, Pastor Sippy, can, can I take my time? Oh, Lord, have mercy. I said, God, why did the bishop get sick? You know what the Lord said, Dr. Baker, Pastor Rick and Pastor Sam? He said, Bishop, there was a person that you interviewed on Radio Row that I did not want you to interview. Can, can I teach? But you wanted to interview them because they were famous. So when you were interviewing them, Bishop, you stepped into disobedience. Yes, it was my will, my perfect will for you to be in Vegas. Yes, it was my perfect will for you to be at the game and, and to share Christ and to interview. But there was one person. 
I did not want you to interview. And then you end up getting sick. Can I teach? You see, when you step outside of God's perfect will, you're open for colds and sicknesses. Do you understand? You see, I, I, I am blunt, Pastor Deborah Watts. So listen, pay attention. Stay there in, run, run, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 16 to 19. Pay attention, everyone. If you go to Wikipedia and type in Luna, L-U-N-A, on that Wikipedia page under Luna, the second picture down on the right-hand side, which would be your right-hand side, which would be to the left of that Wikipedia page under Luna, the female goddess called the moon, it will show a photo of the demon called Mithric, M-I-T-H-R-A-I-C, the Mithric altar to the Luna goddess. At the bottom of the Luna Wikipedia page, it will show photos of not just the sun gods and goddesses, but the moon. See, God did not create the term sun, and God did not create the term moon. It gets deeper. The immaculate patterns of simulated deception. Under the Wikipedia page of the title men, then in parentheses, the term deity. The term men, that's not in Genesis 1. Man is, but not the term men. Because the term men doesn't show up until Genesis 4.26. The term men is a Phrygian deity, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N deity. That is a local descendant of the demon called Hittu Luin, H-I-T-T-O-L-U-N-I-A-N, the moon god Irma, A-R-M-A. -A. He gets deeper. Stay there in Genesis 1, 16 to 19. Another moon goddess by the name of Anahita. If you go to Wikipedia and type on the section when it says search on Wikipedia, type in the term Anahita, A-N-A-H-A-H-I-T-A, A-N-A-H-I-T-A. The first photo on to your right, which would be to the left of the Wikipedia page or vice versa, it will show a photo of a lotus flower with 12 points around it represents the Western Hemisphere clock on the wall. Every clock on a wall throughout history from 12 to 12 represents the moon goddess and a hita, the goddess of time and the moon as a 12 pointed, 12 leaf clock on the wall that's throughout both the Eastern and the Western hemisphere. This 
we are living inside of this global simulation called the matrix. This class is not meant for everyone. In my conclusion, the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. The term soul, sun, men, lunar, moon, the Roman Empire for over 2,000 years, 2,000 years ago, and the Roman Empire in the West lasted for 1,229 years, has thoroughly manipulated history. For the past 6,000 years, we have been lied to. The term for a man called Pinus, and I'm being vague on purpose, or Sneednep, that term is nowhere to be found in scripture. Prior to Adam's fall, Adam did not have that body part. Well, Bishop, the scriptures did say in Genesis 1, 26 and 127, multiply and replenish here. He was not talking about children. God was referring to spiritual creativity. The term sneenip is a name, not of a man, or a male, but the name of a female political ruler in Roman and Greek mythology, also representing a female goddess called Pinus or Sneenip. The part of the deep state that, that is given, the medical deep state that is given this part of the woman's body, they named it clitoris. But the term clitoris in Roman and Greek mythology and the history of the political structure of Roman and Greece, clitoris was not the name of a woman or female. Clitoris was the name of a male politician and also the name of a male goddess. See, we've been lied to. This is called inversion. In my conclusion, the man is ordained by God to pay all the bills. Nowhere in scripture did it say that the house ought to be 50-50. There's no double Dutch demon in the apostolic kingdom. The man, see, where did the sin lie? Not in her, but in him and Adam. Let me take my time. <laughs> Wait a minute now. The man is only a male from the waist down. But he has to learn to be a man from the neck up. The man must take care of his wife, the woman. I would not marry a couple, Pastor Sippy, if the man doesn't have a job. Technically, Pastor Leslie, the woman is not even supposed to be working. I'm not telling you quit your jobs. Or I'm, let's go to school. Listen, we got, I got spiritual daughters in Christ who are doctors and lawyers and judges. And one is a uh, youth judge and a family judge, part of the family court there in New York City, in Manhattan. 
But the reason why the woman has to go to school and work because of the fall of the man. The sin was with Adam, not her. She's in the transgression, but the sin is with the man. He is not ordained to have a side piece. Can I teach? Can, can I just take my time? Listen. He is not ordained to have a sight piece. But the serpent came as a side piece. The serpent is the body organ of Lucifer. How did the body organ get inside of the garden? The first sin was not the forbidden fruit. That was the second sin. Wait a minute, Bishop. What was the first sin? Adam leaving his wife uncovered and unprotected. You see, man, you have to be careful not to put your ministry number one. You see, we, we, there's a lot of men who have fallen in love with the work of the Lord and have fallen out of love with the Lord of the work. Your wife, man of God, is first before your ministry. And she is not ordained by God to pay one bill. You see, the woman, the, the wife, does not have to give you the biscuit at night, man of God, if you're not bringing home the bacon, talk to me now. Wait a minute now. I'm not pre. I'm teaching. You see, no one is teaching this. But the problem is, we have too many sisters falling in love with counterfeit atoms. The body organ doesn't make you a man. Can the apostle teach? The body organ only signifies you to be a male, but not a man. You see, Pastor Jay Gunder, that to me, that is the number one problem in black America. It is not systemic racism. It is the lack of fathers in homes, black homes, white homes, whatever. It is the lack of fathers. Because that father can teach that child how to navigate around a racist system. So stop blaming white people. Do you understand? So women of, listen, woman of God. If your husband does not have a job, stop making babies. Why would you want to bring a child into this world and there's no income. But at the same time, wives, if your husband has a career, he's paying all of the bills, that man, your husband, has a right to the biscuit at night. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Don't tell me. Don't don't tell your husband I ain't got a headache. Okay, for six weeks straight. Okay. The man is the head of the house, the husband. But the problem is we got too many sisters falling in love with counterfeit Adams. You cannot expect a beta woman of God to fall in love with a beta male.
the woman did not have a garden. God told Adam, you dress it and you keep it. No babies, but you see that, Pastor Gunder? It's a mess. Do you understand? Well, Bishop, I got the hot flashes. No, go take a shower and go on a 21-day fast. Stop. So the man is made a man by God's word. No woman can respect a man who doesn't know who he is. A radical, okay, Pastor Sam? So she didn't have a garden. I would not marry a couple if the woman wants him to move in with her. At, no, 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 no. After the woman marries the man and vice versa, then he has to have a house or at least a condo or a townhouse to bring his wife into. It's not, you see, but the thing is, the world has this backwards. So it is good for the man. Wait a minute now. That's scripture. That, no, 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 no. Let's go to Genesis 2 and we're done here tonight. The immaculate patterns of simulated deception. It says it is not good for the man to be alone. You'll find that in Genesis 2. Who was God talking to? I used to think he was talking to all, all man or mankind. God was talking to Adam because it's not meant for every man to be married. So the garden was prepared by God through the man, but the first sin was not the forbidden fruit. It was when Adam left his first ministry, his wife, and went outside of the perfect will of God to name the animals and the king. That's when sin took place. And here comes the side piece, the serpent. So the serpent being the body organ of Lucifer approached the woman as a counterfeit male. In the same Serpent who approached the woman as a counterfeit male then approached the woman's husband, Adam, as a counterfeit female. You see, Satan is a chameleon. And there's that threesome. Do you understand? So, so the woman's side piece and Adam's side piece. That's why there's high blood pressure and cancer and sugar diabetes. That's why bodies stink. It is connected to the serpent. Because in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, the serpent spoke, get this, 46 words to the woman. How many chromosomes do we have? 46. 23 from the father, 23 from the mother, 46. But yet the serpent, Pastor Brown, spoke 46 words in Genesis 3, verses 1 to 6. Every word that came from Lucifer through his body part was a chromosome from the serpent that's now in 8.1 billion people. So if you want to know who, who are hybrids, listen, do you know this is nothing but a clone? Oh, Lord. This is not natural, Pastor Brittany. This is unnatural. Your skin peels. It's reptilic. Be but prior to Adam's fall, Adam didn't have a skull. He didn't have a spine a serpentine spine, 
but mankind acquired that because of his attachment to the body organ of Lucifer called the serpent. In my conclusion, why do women have periods? God did not design the woman to have that. The premenstrual cycle came from the serpent because the body organ called the serpent, that's the body organ of Lucifer. Lucifer was once the minstrel, the choir director of every angelic government in the 17 trillion heavens. Wait a minute. So the minstrel had put in her a premenstrual cycle. Now, by God's grace, the woman, until she reaches a certain age, has to cleanse herself. Why? Because of what the serpent put in her 6,000 years ago. See, this is not for, ev this type of teaching is not for everyone. That's why women have periods a premenstrual cycle because the minstrel Lucifer violated her and but broke her. So the woman who was later named Eve was the first Mendenhall casualty. Well, what does Mendenhall mean, my bishop? If you go to the Urban Dictionary, can I teach? And go to the Urban Dictionary and type in Mendenhall. It means to mount up someone from behind while they are on in a theater position on the ground. After the deed is complete, you roll them over and see the humiliation in their eyes. So the woman was but broken from behind as she was in a prenatal position. And that's why children for the past 6,000 years since Genesis 3 and 6 are conceived and grow and matriculate in the womb of women in a prenatal six position, the same position that the mother of all living was violated. Every child, actually on a monogram, a shape like the number six, that is a sign and a generational symbol of the position that the mother of all living was in by the serpent. The serpent put in her ovarian cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer, bone cancer, blood cancer, sickle cell, high blood, sugar diet. All of that came from the serpent. Every sickness, every disease, every virus, every mental torment, every mental disorder and sickness and syndrome came directly from the serpent. Can you give me a few minutes? The coats of skin, this is not natural. I want you to hear, this is not natural, it's unnatural. This will become dust because it's reptilic. When you put it under a magnifying glass, it's unnatural, it's reptilic. So you have to bathe it and shower it in lotions and potions and deodorant and cologne because 
this thing, the flesh is already cursed. You're not cursed, but the entity called pigmentation. But where did Christ sin? The legion, this is where you get the term re legion, for we are many, sent them into the herd of swine. In the swine is the characteristics of a pig, pigmentation. God never intended for us to have this. I'm going to say this again. God never intended for us to have two eyes, a mouth, a brain, a skull. God never intended for us to have two hands, two arms, and two legs. Who had that? Who had those parts? The serpent did. We've been hybrid for the past 6,000 years. Wait a minute, Bishop. Wait a minute. Bishop, I, I've got the Holy Spirit. Yes, you have the Holy Spirit. And the reason why we have to have Christ, because this body, which the deep state calls human, and you have to stop calling yourself human, because the term human means monster. You see, the first human was the serpent. Thank you, Pastor Sam. I know this is hard for, for some of you to wrap your mind around. This is heavy. This is what we call the immaculate patterns of simulated deception. I don't care what color. You see, your color is not who you are. Allow me to get my apostolic gangster lean. Your color is not a God. Listen, black folk. Listen, white folk. Your color is not a deity. Your color is what you are, but it's not who you are. This is going to the ground. Your whatness is going to the ground, but your who-ness of who you are as spirit is going back to Christ who gave it in spirit and in truth, not in pigmentation and in truth. Because the flesh profits nothing, but the spirit is profitable unto all things. You see, our color is irrelevant to God. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. But because of your fallen state, Black History Month, White History Month, victimhood, reparations. So you need to be repaired. Okay. How is LeBron James a victim? LeBron James is worth over a billion dollars. How is he a victim? LeBron James doesn't care about Black people. Let me get off of that. Do you understand? LeBron James doesn't care about Black people. It's a game, okay? I want, I want black folk to listen to me. Oh, Lord. No one owes you a penny. No one owes you a penny. Oh, I'm ready for my reparations, okay? You're going to Starbucks, and you don't want to pay for your coffee because you said this is Black History Month and I want my reparations coffee. <laughs> and so, and so the devil makes you look like a fool. You see, Pastor Sam, his billion dollars is nothing but a loan for a short time and they will take him out too. Do you understand? In my conclusion... Was your minds blown away? Put up those faces. Ladies and gentlemen, put them up if your minds were blown today. Listen, let me get a drink of water here. Listen. I'm going to say this. Apostle Ty Kemp, great to see you. Apostle Carlotta Kemp, listen. You have to be careful men who you fall in love with. You see, every 
woman is not designed for every man. She saved. She went down in water in Yeshua's holy name, filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.38. But she has to be designed for you. Because in 1 Corinthians, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, okay? Listen, you holding hands and kissing here, but I had the Holy Spirit. Okay, listen, listen. That's why Paul said what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Oh, my God. Here comes revelation. Look at this, Pastor Ellis Human. Here comes revelation. How many of you have heard of the term soul ties? Go to Matthew 5.32. (laughs) I thought I was only going to teach for an hour and a half. God says, listen, you're going to teach how long I want you to teach. And I'm done here. Matthew 5.32. You see, this is not taught Joe Shostein, whom the bishop was blessed to be on his podcast a few times, not because he wanted me, but because his children loves the bishop's teaching. You see, that shooting from the other day, he knows the individuals who pulled the trigger. Matthew 5.32 This is apostolic doctrine, governmental structure. Matthew 5, 32, but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away or divorce his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, committed the doctor. Now, do you want me to stop here or I can continue to teach, okay? I can stop here or if you want me to teach, I will say, keep teaching, Bishop. The Greek term for fornication is the term pornea. P-O-R-N-E-I-A. Christ gives clear, distinct, apostolic law concerning marriage, divorce, and remarriage. The synagogue of Satan was asking Christ, I'm not talking about Jews or Israel, I'm talking one family, the Rothschilds, okay? That during the time of Christ, they were called the Bacchus, according to Josephus. It had been said, who was it shall put away his wife? Matthew 5, 31, let him give her a writing of divorcement, okay? And Christ is teaching you. But I say unto you, If a man has a wife, she has not committed any of the branches of fornication because the Greek word for fornication is pornea. P-O-R-N-E-I-A, which means the branches of fornication. Under the branches, all adultery is fornication, but not all fornication is adultery. The branches of fornication that will give the woman the right to divorce her husband or that will give the man the right to divorce his wife. The branches branches of fornication, when a man sleeps with a woman that's not his wife, he's married, she's single, he commits adultery, she commits fornication. Or if he sleeps with another man's wife, both of them have have committed adultery. 
or vice versa. If the woman slept with a man who's single, he committed fornication, she committed adultery, or if the woman, the wife of the man, sleeps out on him and sleeps with another woman's husband, they both have committed adultery. So here are the branches of pornea or fornication that the man has a right to divorce his wife if she committed in any of these sins and vice versa. Fornication. Sexual sins between a sing two single people. Adultery. Sexual sins between a man who's married to a woman that's not his wife and vice versa. Bestiality, sex with animals. Masturbation, sexual deviant sins. Anal and oral sex. So let me say this again. This is not taught in the apostolic body. What well, Bishop, T.D. Snakes, what T.D. Snakes is wrong. You see, this is what happens when people listen to the wrong teaching. Oh, the marriage bed is, is honorable, you know what I mean, and the bed undefiled, but, but they did not go on to quote the rest of that scripture in Hebrews. But whoremongers and adulterers, God shall judge. So underneath the branches of fornication that gives the innocent party, man or woman, woman or man, the right to divorce the other. Adultery. Fornication, bestiality, anal and or sex. Your mouth, women, woman of God. Can, can I teach? Let me go slow. The mouth of the woman of God was not designed by God to go down on her husband. Neither is the mouth of the man designed by God to go down between the legs of his wife. Can I teach? It's perversion. The body of the man is not designed to go to the backside of the woman, his wife. It is not the backside of the woman that will allow her husband. You see, why are they? Because these are spirits that they brought from the world. It tells you and I that they still had demons and that they had the residue. It's forbidden, Pastor Say, Who does that? The serpent. Who taught the woman? Can I just teach? Who taught the woman to suck? The serpent did. Who taught the man to go down on his wife? The serpent did. Who taught the woman that it was okay for her husband to go to the backside of the desert? The serpent did that. Bestiality from the serpent, anal sex from the serpent, oral sex from the serpent, all of that mess comes from the serpent. Refical, you see? Now, if you Type in or write in the term Lucifer and write it from right to left because Hebrew is written for right to, from right to left. You get the Latin term refical, and refical means the recycling of fecal matter. The marriage bed is not for defilement. You're not ordained by God to watch porn. Pornea, pornography. It's destroying apostolic homes, but no one's teaching this because of this. Joe Shostein is not called to preach. Joe 
Shostein or Osteen is not a preacher. He's just a motivational speaker. Because if he was called by God to preach like I do and like someone like Apostle Jennings do does, he wouldn't have anyone in his building. So the man's mouth is not meant to go down between the legs of his wife. That's the area where there's bacteria and germs. And the man's body was not designed to go through her backside. And the woman's mouth is getting quiet here now. Is not was not ordained by God to go down on her husband. You see, everyone needs to be. Thank you, Pastor Brittany. Apostles, we are ordained by Christ to set the body of Christ in apostolic governmental order. If the husband or the wife is committing any of these branches of pornea, fornication, adultery, anal oral sex, bestiality, pornography, sodomy, masturbation, financial adultery, you got a side piece, that's grounds for divorce from the innocent victim. If it's the husband who is innocent or the wife who is innocent. Oh, it's quiet now. And the reason why the body of Christ has no power because demons are in your bed. His soul ties. The husband marries the wife. Wife marries the husband. Everything he slept with, his wife has now slept with. Everything she slept with, her husband has now slept with. If she slept with the dog and she didn't repent of that and her husband didn't know that, he slept with that same dog. Now he's walking around with a ungodly craving for dogs. If he slept with a horse or slept with a prostitute, and he didn't repent of that, and his wife didn't know that before they got married, she slept with the same prostitute. That's why she has a craving for porn and ready acts, okay? And she has a craving for male and female prostitutes. This is so time. Here we go, Q dogs pass us in. Some years ago, a good friend of mine, Nigerian pastor in Atlanta, Georgia, had a spiritual daughter in his church. Now. She's a pastor now. Years ago, she was a student, okay, in one of the Atlanta, um, the, the, the black all-female college <laughs> that I constantly talk about that was named uh, after Laura Spellman. Laura Spellman, the wife of John D. Rockefeller, she was a pro proponent of black eugenics and the abortion of black children who's created Spelman College. So this young girl went to a frat party, a Q dog party at Morehouse. They ran a train on her. Let me say this again. They ran a train on her. They did everything under the sun, excuse me, Lord, for saying it, under the greater light. And for a period of time, she could not stop barking like a dog. Because all of the liquids of these demons, she was barking like a dog. And could have, because the demons were transferred into her through semen. 
and urine and saliva, all of those demons. Demons occupy urine. Demons occupy semen. Demons occupy blood and saliva. Those are demonic entities. You see, this is the reason why marriage is so important that you marry the right woman, man, uh, uh, man of God, that you marry the right man, sisters, that you marry the right woman. But you see, so ties. So in Matthew 5.32, if a man leaves his wife, she has not committed any of the grounds for divorce according to Matthew 5.32. There was no adultery she committed, no fornication, no bestiality, no pornography, no anal and or sex, no sodomy, no financial adultery. He leaves her and divorces her he cannot remarry because whoever he marries, he's an adulterer. She's an adulteress. Oh, Lord. Listen, woman of God, if that husband has not committed any of the branches of fornication, pornea, according to Matthew 5.32, he has not committed adultery, no fornication, no masturbation, no bestiality, no pornography, no sodomy, no pedophilia, no anal and or sex. And the woman leaves him for no reason. She can never marry again because whoever she marries, she's an adulteress. Her new husband is the adulterer. The marriage is filled with demons. So you got people in the body of Christ married two, three, five, six times over. It's an abomination. See, that's why Joe Showstein, Osteen, would never teach this because he won't have a soul in his building. See, real preachers like me, real preachers like Apostle Jennings, we preach against sin. See, these are soul ties. God has not ordained the couple, the husband and the wife, the man and the woman, to tie each other up, <laughs> dominating each other by putting handcuffs on the arms and legs. That's not God. There you go, Pastor Sipi. Oh, that's the demon, Anahita. These are demons. Chain of, well, it's just for a play. But no, you're bringing demons into the marriage bed. See, fetishes are serpentine. And one pastor tell me, well, he was in a, uh, oh, let me explain. I'm not going to say his name. He said, Bishop, when I was courting my wife, wasn't married to her, we were a part of the same uh, trustee board at this particular um, ministry. And they were playing footsies underneath the table. His wife developed bone cancer in both feet. You see what I mean? Listen, you have to teach holiness. Woman of God, never allow your husband to do that to you, to go down on you, to go in the back of you because it's filthiness, it's corruption, it's an abomination, it's a disgusting act that came not from God, but from Satan himself through the serpent. And that is my end today. At the two hours, 29 minutes and 
30 seconds. A Marja 2, Volume 2, The Immaculate Patterns of Simulated Deception. And I thank you. If that man is beating on his wife, woman of God, you have a right to leave him. Don't listen. There was a case I told you guys about many times. Actually, two cases, one in Delaware, one in Maryland. Same result. Women went to their pastor. Black and blue, teeth knocked out. But the pastor told them, the Bible says, go back to your husband. And the next day, both of these women, their heads were blown off. And now the pastors are in prison. Good. Women of God, listen. A part of pornea is domestic abuse, is domestic violence. But see, a lot of these pastors won't call the police on these men because they bring big tides. Listen to me. If I hear about any of you brothers doing that to your, I'll call the police on you myself and vice versa. See, this is radical teaching. Woman of God, get a man who's clean. Don't get a man who's beta. Don't get a man who loves wearing dresses. Get a man's man. Man of God, get a woman. A woman who is a powerful apostolic beta woman of God. Ooh, don't get a man. Oh my, don't get a man who's a dog eye. Thank you, Pastor Colley. <laughs> Okay, the word of God exposes these two-legged dogs, not just four-legged dogs. Paul calls them dogs, who? Sodomites. The LGBTQRSTUVWXY, all dogs. I'm not talking about them as souls. I'm talking the spirits that they carry. The other day... <laughs> Pastor, Colin, you hit a nerve with me. I think on Sunday, I was called to cover a red carpet in Beverly Hills. These two men dressing like women. These drag queens. Hi! They reached out their hand. I looked at them like this. They walked on because the demons in them saw the God of heaven in me. You won't interview them? No. Do you understand? Thank you guys for being with the bishop tonight. Great to see you, Pastor Colin. Okay. This is sick. Okay. God has called me to Hollywood on a permanent basis to change it. It's my mantle. So men... Take care of your wife. Women, you have an obligation as the wife to take care of your husband, to cook for him. He should be cooking too, okay? Thank you for joining the man of God. Remember Matthew 5, 32. No one's teaching this. The body of the woman was not designed, man, for you to go to the backside of the desert. Where did you learn that from? You picked it up from the serpent. You're saved, but you see, even though you're saved, but you got the residue of demons in you, man of God. A couple that I counseled years ago, and I share, shared this with you guys many times, a couple out of the Bronx pastors. The pastor, good friend of mine said, Bishop, my wife and I have a problem. And uh, he says, we need counseling. Come to find out during counseling, he did not know that his wife, before they 
became married, before they even met each, met each other, was a pool stripper, a pool dancer, a pole dancer. He didn't know that. And then on the honeymoon night, when the moon came down, when the honey ran out, then he says, Bishop, she wanted me to come down on her. She wanted me to go behind her. And I asked her, no combination, were you ever a prostitute? And did you ever pole dance? She started crying. No combination. You see what I mean? This is apostolic law that apostles teach. Men of God, man of God, man of God, love your wives. That means apostolic normal love, not this corruption from the streets. Thank you everyone for joining the Bishop tonight. Any questions tonight? This is heavy. If you need counseling, please email the Bishop, okay? At Global Spiritual uh, Revolution Radio at yahoo.com. Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at yahoo.com. I got a, a sense in my spirit. There's a lot of questions. Because see, a lot of men have been broken by these witches. A lot of women have been broken by these warlocks. Always remember this man of God. The most dangerous woman in the world is a female who has nothing to lose. Women of God, woman of God, the most dangerous man in the world is a male who has nothing to lose. Listen, because a true man of God will protect his woman. And woman of God, I'm going to say this and I'm going to end it here tonight. You're not ordained by God to pay one bill. Clap your hands, sis. So listen, wherever you are, clap your hands with a uh, woman of God. He's ordained to pay his bills and your bills. He's ordained to pay your car note. He's ordained to pay your car insurance. Not for you to go crazy with the credit cards, but he's ordained by God to pay everything. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> Can a wife leave her husband if he's a narcissist? Well, you can't leave him because of that. Then, you know, I would love to um, counsel you to. Now, if he's beating on you, domestic violence, yeah, you have a right to leave him and divorce him. But for being a narcissist, well, he needs counseling. Okay. Great question. See, a godly husband and a godly wife, this is how they love each other. Respecting the boundaries of the nature of the man and, and the woman. Men of, man of God, her, her mouth was not designed by God to go down on you. That's a demon. Man of God, God did not design you to go to the backside of her desert. That's a demon. PayPal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. PayPal, man. Woo, my, listen. Uh, narcissism is a demonic attachment. But I believe through counseling, he can be delivered. But he has to want to be delivered. Now, if he doesn't want to be delivered, okay, uh, and then that's, you, then you got to take the next steps. But for right now, don't run out and divorce him. Uh, give it, listen, I would love to counsel him. See, divorce is always the last resort. God hates divorce. 
But listen right now, uh, paypal.me forward slash GSR Minigre. How many of you enjoyed tonight's teaching? Raise up your hands. If this teaching was mind blowing, put up those faces. If this teaching was mind blowing, paypal.me forward slash GSR Minigre. Uh, uh, yes, you can do that, Pastor Colin. Absolutely. Paypal.me. Whether you get paid once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks, once a month. Plant the Lord's tithe. We don't say the word so here at Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group because the word so is the name of a female hog or pig, sow. So we say the word plant. If the gross of your income is 3,000, the Lord's tithe is 300. 2,000, the Lord's tithe is 200. 1,000, the Lord's tithe is 100. Take this, I like to call it mice or mouse or rat. Take this or your finger. If you have a desktop, laptop, app or Chrome, tablet, um, Android, iPhone, Apple Watch, click on paypal.me forward slash GSR. I mean, could, no one's teaching this, okay? Paypal.me forward slash GSR. I mean, could, after... You click on the PayPal link, then click send, plant the Lord's tithe. And in the very same transaction, plant $100, $200, $300, $400, $500. Three of you give a thousand. We got students who are actors and actresses out here uh, who are on the stage there in New York on Broadway. We got people who work behind the camera who are students. We have May, uh, great, great, great brothers, powerful mans of God, man of God, who are in the NFL, NHL, Major League Baseball. They give $1,000 each week. They, they can't afford that. Please write now. Have you ever heard anyone teach this? No one's teaching this. And if they're telling you they're teaching this, they're lying. PayPal.me forward slash GSR Armenia Group. And I got a sense right now, there's a, a, a woman of God who is being sexually abused by her husband. You have a right to leave him. PayPal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. Uh, after you click on the PayPal link, then click send. Don't click request, click send, plant the Lord's tithe, the gross of the Lord's tithe, and also plant 100, 200, 300. You should be like popcorn, 600, 800, $900. Three, three of you give a thousand, praise God. I thank God for all the students who faithfully give each and every week. Thank God for Pastor Chris Harris, one of our powerful uh, pastors here in Long Beach, California. Thank you, Pastor Chris Harris. Love you, man of God. Love you. Click paypal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. The last phase of tonight's teaching is tough for a lot of people to receive because see, they're not used to true apostolic teaching, true apostolic governmental teaching. Do you guys remember the, it's tough, but it's needed, Pastor Sam. Oh my God. The testimony I shared with Years ago, I used to be an international evangelist, national international evangelist during the 80s and during the first part of the 90s. And there was a, uh, um, a ministry in a small town in Ohio called Heath, Ohio. And the man sat in the back and he didn't want, he didn't want to get up when I called him to the front. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I went back and I instructed the pastor and his wife to dismiss the whole congregation because we didn't want anyone in this man's business. You remember that, Pastor Sam? He was bleeding from behind. It smelt like semen, but God delivered him. Now the man's married, got children, married to a great woman of God with children. A couple, I spoke at a Ghanaian church in Brooklyn, okay? Shortly before the shutdown, a month before the shutdown, 
her breath, the, the white, listen, let's start with the husband. The husband's breath, the Holy Spirit said, his breath smells like semen, Bishop. His wife, right beside him, the Holy Spirit said, her breath smells like a period. Immediately, the Holy Spirit instructed me to tell the pastor and his wife to dismiss the whole congregation. And I invited them to the pastor's office along with the pastor, the host pastor and his wife, the first lady. And they were vomiting. Now I want you to listen. They were vomiting green blood. And green blood was semen, impure. You see, my assignment is not to embarrass people, but to deliver them, okay? Woo, Pastor Dana, we're, we're going to pray that absolutely. And you know, Pastor Colleen, uh, I would say in two weeks, we're going to go to our mass deliverance session. Not now, because I'm still recovering from my flu. Oh, Pastor Chair, this is heavy. Demons, Pastor Sam, okay? No one should be a part of any secret society. No one should be a mason. God's word forbids this while we need this. Oh, thank you, Pastor Yvonne Jackson. Deliverance. So ties. Inside of that woman are hundreds of faces of men in her womb. In some women. Inside of that man is hundreds of faces of women with some that soul ties. Those are demons. No oaths, no pledges, no blood oaths. A lot of you as children used to cut your hand or your finger and, you, and your friend used to cut his or her hands in their, in, in their finger and used to put your hand or your finger up against theirs, blood oath, that's demon you need to, to repent of that. PayPal.me forward slash GSR Armenia Group. No, no bloody Mary. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Any frogs in your home, frog vases, you need to get rid of them. You wonder why you can't get rid of the headache? Because you, oh, bitch, but I just brought this Bought this for my husband and I love it. I got it at a yard sale. Okay, but it's occupied with demons, frog vases. And for your pan Africanness, you <laughs> you brought from Africa voodoo vases and voodoo mask, and you brought demons out of that. When you tell black folk they don't want to listen, Pastor Stan, African sculptures. Voodoo, hoodoo, taboo, yahoo, it's all demonic. Frog vases, it's not enough just to take the vase and throw it in the trash can. You need to get a hammer, a two by four, you need, listen, and crush those dolls, crush those vases, those frogs. Oh, I got little angels. Crush them because that's how demons in all demons need is a host. Egyptian art has to go. Thank you, Pastor Carly. African art has to go. Okay. But this is what the demons tell you. If you throw it away, you won't be black. You see, it's all about you. You see, you see, God is so sick and tired of people looking at their blackness and whiteness like it's a deity. Don't give it away, the frog vase, Egyptian art, African paintings, African voodoo. Man. Don't give it away so you transfer that demon, destroy them, crush them, and then put them in the garbage can where they belong. Christmas trees, got to go. Well, my grandmother passed this, then this art. Listen, let it go. Christ was not born on December 25th. Stop. Christ was born during the time of the harvest. Between September and November, specifically, Christ was born 
on October 7th. Why is that <laughs> that date so important? Remember the October 7th attacks? You see? Throw out, throw out your Easter eggs, your bonnets, your jackrabbit chocolate bunny tails. On, throw out all that it's paganistic, it's demons. Throw out your frog bases, your angel bases. And I'm going to tell you something else that's going to be really radical. God said, throw out, throw out your crosses. You don't worship the cross. You worship the savior of all mankind who died on the cross and was resurrected three days, actually, two and a half days later. Okay. Ooh, you see? Generation of thank you, Pastor Rick, for revealing that. Okay. Stop wearing panda shirts. Pet it. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Okay. Those of you parents that got children, there are toy companies creating little stuffed animals and stuffed little trucks that has the pedophilia symbol, a half of a heart. It doesn't go all the way to the point, but it stops any, listen, go on Wikipedia and look at FBI pedophilia symbols, half a heart, half a moon, all of this stuff people are bringing in the ministry. It's garbage. Do me a favor, throw that stuff out tonight. Well, I'm throw it out tonight. And you'll wonder why you're hearing footsteps in the middle of the night and you're the only one in your apartment. You'll wonder why you can't get rid of a migraine headache because you got demons in your home. Frog vases, angel vases, Egyptian art, African art, okay? <laughs> you know who, you, you listen, do you know who invented shea butter and is using it? Witches out of West Africa, but you tell the tell the try if you tell black folk and try to teach them, they'll look at you like you're crazy. Okay, let go of these African names that are nothing but demons. Do you understand? <laughs> okay, let me go. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. The FBI list of symbols right 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 beside pastor colleen's name the link show me state you see that's why the body of christ must be educated so next time you go to an ice cream store you take your child and if they see that half a heart that's a pedophilia sign insurance companies having these pedophilia symbols Ho tip, not ho tip, ho tip, <laughs> Q tip, and going to hell. You see, bl the black community is allowing the devil to make you look like a fool. 50 cent quarter, nickel penny, ice tea, ice cube, ice tray, icicle, six nine, five nine, three one, little bow wow, snoop dog demon, glorella garbage. You're nothing but slaves. You got black folk who are mad at me, Pastor said, All you do is pick on my, I don't just pick on, listen, I'm not picking on anyone. I don't care what color you are. When that TD Snakes mess came out, RICO charges are found against TD Snakes and Sean Combs. Do you know, Pastor Sam, there were black folk online mad at me? You're supposed to be protected. Or no, no, I don't care what color you are. Okay. Power body creep. <laughs> Power bottom. Did you hear snakes when he when he said, Well, you know what? I don't have to tell you anything. I can just repent it. You see, he's exposed. Let me let me talk about little little Fanny Willis. <laughs> Listen. Black folk, listen, you know she's lying 
through her teeth what you talk about. With she's lying. When one of the Trump attorneys asked her point blank, "Has this man, your lover, ever came to your place where you rested your head at night?" She didn't say yes or no. She said, well, you know, let me get, look through my notes. You lied. No, that's not. My question is, did this man, okay, conflict of interest, ever sleep with you when you laid your head at night? And then she wants to throw out the race card. Stop. She's guilty. And I'm sick of black folk doing this. Okay. Yes, the, the, the system is racist, but why are you giving the system bullets? You're trying to destroy President Trump, who hasn't done anything. But you got this witch, <laughs> little Fanny Lou, okay? <laughs> well, you said this. Oh, uh, you said that, okay? She can't answer the question why she's lying, Got a lot of money in her closet, Pastor EJ. She's trash. I said it. She's trash. And she's talking on this ghetto stuff. So yeah, I told him I'll give you uh, 2,000 Gs. I'll give See, she's ghetto trash. Okay? She can't just say yes or no. Yes, I slept with her or no. She has to go through her. Well, you like it. That's not the question. The question is, did this man ever come to your place when you lay your head at night? Did this man ever sleep with you? She can't answer it. Why? Because she's guilty. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, Snoop Dogg, he loves President Trump now. You know why Pastor Rick goes in? <laughs> Listen, but Pastor Rick, I, I, I pray that God give me a gangster in the White House. Listen, I said it. I want a man, that's President Trump, who's got the testicular fortitude, the size of 50 Mount Rushmore's, to say what needs to be said and to pull down the deep state. I don't want no old Grandpa Joe, L-L-J, cool, J, cool, oh, that boy. And you got black folk laughing. Do you understand? Think she's a witch, Pastor Rick. She can't answer one simple question. Did this man ever sleep with you at your home in a cabin, okay, when you lay your head at night? So she's going through this. You're lying. Answer the question. Okay. Uh oh, what goes up? You see, when you tried to destroy President Trump, you see, now what's going to happen? Little Fanny, <laughs> I'll call her Fanny Lou. What, uh, what you talking about, Willa? She's going to be disbarred, and so is her whore. Okay, let, let, I got to be careful. Who warlock whore, he's going to be disbarred too. Witches, nothing but lies. Okay? And little Nikki Haley, she thinks she's going to be president. So she thinks she's betting on President Trump going to jail. That's not going to happen. What is the real name? <laughs> I got to go. What is the real name of Nikki Haley? Okay? Let me continue to use wisdom. Okay? Oh, Lord have mercy. I hope and pray that judge, okay, disbars her in the state of Georgia, disbars Miss Thaney. Well, she's a lying dog. Okay, let me, let me, I got to be careful. Thank you for joining the bishop. Also, not just on paypal.me forward slash GSR Mini Group. Also, you're right, Pastor Wally, uh, Wally P. Tech, okay? Nikki Faley, <laughs> as in she fails. We got a uh, a cash app. Our cash app, if Pastor Colleen, some of the passages you can put up on cash app, dollar sign Global Revolution One, you see, Nimrata, a name of a demon in Hinduism. Okay? The under, right under passage, uh, True Witness, 
Dollar sign global revolution one. Dollar sign global revolution one. Play it. Let me get some rest. Thank you so much, Pastor Charity. I went over my time. Okay. Thank you. And my doctors are texting me. <laughs> okay. Oh, you promised it, Bishop. Uh, eight, uh, an hour and a half. You're going almost three hours. Thank you. Okay. Oh, they said the judge gave to her. Can, you see, it's all corruption, Pastor Karen. You see, but you see, and they want uh, they want President Trump to pay almost four hundred million. That's nothing to President Trump. Okay. Are oh, they still fighting at the Supreme Supreme Court level, Pastor Colleen, concerning? President Trump getting back on the ballot in Colorado and Maine. These devils know that President Trump is going to win the right is going to win the, the White House. Okay. Letitia, oh, she's a witch, Pastor Rick. Oh Lord. You can look at her and, and tell they don't care. These demons, the mess that's going on in New York City, the migrant crisis. They're coming into New York City and Chicago and, and killing the American people. Okay? Where's Letitia James? Trash. Okay, I got to go. Thank you guys for joining the bishop tonight. Also, um, mail your checks and money orders uh, to P.O. Box and care of Bishop Larry Gators, P.O. Box 161. Lomina, California, 90717. Uh, Pastor Colin, if you can put that up as well, we're done here tonight. Uh, in care of Bishop Larry Gators, or Larry Gators, P.O. Box 161, Lomita, California, 90717, right beside Pastor Colleen's name. When you're sending a money order, use a post, post office money order. Um, you know, we got one of the students... Uh, from out west here, I'm not going to say she keeps sending me these checks with her name. I Listen, if you're going to send us checks, it has to be in the bishop's name, okay? Thank you, guys. Pray for me, Pillars and Strategies. Pray for me, Pastor um, Pastor Ty and Pastor Carlotta. Thank you, guys. I'm going to get some rest, and, um, and then we will have, I'm going to skip a couple of days here um, because my doctor's only only wanted me to teach an hour and a half or went over. And I'll hear tomorrow phone calls, okay? But anyway, um, so we're going to skip the rest of this week. I'll see you guys on next Tuesday, okay? Can you guys hold on to next Tuesday? I'll probably have a couple of peek-ins from now until Tuesday, okay? Demons are leading these people around like, like a dog. You're right, Pastor, Pastor Rick, okay? Get your rest and thanks for work. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, Apostle Time, Pastor Carlotta, uh, thank you, Apostle Sam, Apostle Colleen, all you guys, Pastor Cynthia, share this teaching, especially on Matthew 532. So ties, share this. The bishop loves you. Good night from Los Angeles. I'll see you guys next Tuesday and pray for me as I recover. Praise God in a lot of a lot of snot is coming out of my nose, Pastor Colleen, and all that, all that cold, okay? Because of disobedience of interviewing one person that, that the Holy Spirit did not want me to interview. And I want to announce, Pastor Sam, I ordered, um, my publicist told me about this tea. It's called Yellow Root Tea. How many of you have heard, heard, have heard of that tea? Yellow Root Tea. I just... Um, I just ordered me some in order. Remember, Grandma used to fix those little jelly jams, those preservatives, and put them in in the basement. Okay, ordered some of that too. But uh, yellow, yellow root tea, yellow Y E W L O W root tea. Look into it. My publicist said it will knock out this cold, destroy all this bacteria. So I'm going to try it. And I, my uh, personal assistants picked up. Some burdock tea, a couple of boxes of that, Pastor Sam. Also, some soursop tea. So um, they got me on these antibiotics, but the Holy Spirit said to me, Bishop, be careful about these anti antibiotics. Be careful, okay? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. 
remember the best is yet to be the last of life for which the first was made. CMOS is what that's the only tea we ha we don't have yet, but we're going to order that in Yeshua's holy name. Good night. Love you, Pastor Deborah Watts, all you guys. Okay. Good night from Los Angeles, paypal.me forward slash GSR Mina Group. Okay. Our cash app link is dollar sign global revolution one. Thank you. I'll see you guys on next Tuesday. I'll have a couple of peek ins from now to then. And I would say the next two to three weeks, we're going to come back with our global mass deliverance session. It's not time yet because I have not recovered from my flu. God bless you. Pray for the bishop. Hold me up in prayer. Hold your bishop up in prayer because I'm on the front line fighting for you guys, fighting for the kingdom of Christ and for the bloodstained banner of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Christ. Thank you, Pastor True Witness. Right beside Pastor True, Pastor True, uh, right beside Pastor True Witness is our PayPal link. Please plant right now. We need your help. We'll be starting our TV show, praise God, in the spring. And also uh, we're launching uh, a studio in the spring as well called the Global Movement Studios. Pray for me. I'm going to get some rest. God bless you. Um, I got some uh, chicken broth soup with no meat. Sweet, sweet sleep. Thank you so much, Pastor Deborah. God bless you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you in Christ. Thank you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. But we'll have some peek ins from now until then. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Good night from Los Angeles.